the formal launch today of the Centre for Social Impact marks the beginning of a vision, a vision of an academic institution fit for social purpose. We're committed to supporting and strengthening the social enterprises of today, and equally important to educating, I hope inspiring, the social enterprises of tomorrow. For the three partner universities, as for the three business schools, the centre bears testimony to the collective role we can play in providing socially responsible business management. To get this far is already a considerable achievement. It was the former Prime Minister John Howard who responded to the urgings of his community business partnership and set aside a $12.5 million endowment to establish the centre. It was the present Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, who confirmed that financial support and his government that recognised, in the words of the Deputy Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, that the centre will create positive social impact at the intersection between government, business and community life. Under the terms of the government contract, the endowment needs to be matched by at least, at least, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> an equal level of funding from outside the Commonwealth government. Already more than $7 million of matching funds has been contributed. I do pay tribute to the four philanthropists who dreamed of this moment and with no little courage, put their money into the institution that we launched today. I thank these venture capitalists who have had the faith that they will be able to reap a social return on their investment by privately funding the centre to improve the management capacity of social enterprises and the strategic intent of corporate citizenship. I pay tribute to David Gonski, to Robin Crawford, who is with us today, to Daniel Petrie and Warwick Negus, who are digging deep to provide $4 million to do the things we need to do. I recognise, too, with heartfelt thanks, the $1.5 million contributed by the Helen McPherson Smith Trust to endow a chair of not for profit management of the Melbourne Business School. I am delighted that uh, Darvel Hutchinson is with us today. Because that position will contribute strongly to the capability of the centre. And as a result of that support, government, private, philanthropic, we're already on the road. Since mid-February, we've run through the generosity of uh, Bain and Company, and I'm delighted that Alan is with us today. We've run a series of focus groups. Those who have attended have shaped the four-year strategic plan that will be available to you as you leave today. Entitled Building on Ambition, it's a living and breathing document that will guide the centre, but with your active intervention, will continue to evolve. I'm delighted that the centre now has a general manager. We've held interviews for a director of teaching and learning and a director of research. And I anticipate that we will announce the outcomes of the selection processes in the near future. Our board has held its first meeting. Our partnership group is working on turning the collaborative spirit of three universities into a graduate certificate with a core group of master subjects gaining cross accreditation. Two advisory councils, one in Melbourne and one in Sydney, will hold their first meetings next month. More immediately, we've already launched an executive program which brings together top academics, leading practitioners from across Australia and around the world. It's somewhat foolhardy, I suppose, to go to the market so early, but with your support, I feel confident that we can manage the risk. The centre has already begun to function as a meeting place, a meeting place across and between the private, the public, and the not-for-profit sectors. There is an enormous groundswell of interest and enthusiasm that we need to harness and to harness quickly. The CSI website that is launched today 
will serve as a channel of communication for the wider public. So I hope, I hope that you can hear in my words the passion which I feel for this unique project and why it was so difficult to keep on my poker face when Fred approached me. <laughs> like all good not-for-profit organisations, and uh, Fred, I include universities in this generic description, <laughs> like all good not-for-profit organisations, our ambitions will always, must always, outstrip our resources. The centre needs your continued help. We need more core funding, people to attend our courses, scholarships for students, and individuals and institutions to support us in a myriad of ways. For me, and for Violetta, and Anne, and Chris, and Danielle, and Esther, and Eva, and Lisa, and Penny, and Fulm, this is a wonderful moment. It's often said, with considerable truth, that behind every successful man there stands a surprised woman. With me, as you may have discerned from that list, stand a formidable team of eight women who are one and all amazed they have carried me and more importantly the centre so far in so short a time. I've met with well over a hundred organisations in the last few months. I've listened intently, I've talked, and as you know, talked and talked and had endless ideas of widely varying usefulness. It's the centre's team that's turned rhetoric into reality. The centre, as you've heard, is not a centre of not-for-profit management. It's not a centre of corporate social responsibility. It's not a centre of philanthropy. It intends to be all those things but also something more. It's a centre for social impact, which through its teaching, research, and facilitated skills, in short, through its influence, is able to drive social innovation. Its ambition is to harness the entrepreneurial spirit within business, within government, within social enterprise to generate new ways of organising our national resources in ways that contribute to social benefit and public good. Your Excellencies, on behalf of the three founding universities represented here today, on behalf of the national institution that will be something far more than the sum of the parts, thank you for launching the centre with the continued support of those in this room and many beyond, we will turn this centre in into, into, into an institution of which Australia can be proud. Please join us in team.